The musician, actor, and civil rights leader Harry Belafonte passed away at the age of 96. Belafonte spent his life advocating for several causes in addition to singing international songs like Teo the Banana Boat Song, winning a Tony Award for acting, and appearing in numerous feature films. He backed several civil rights movements for black Americans in the 1960s, ran anti-poverty, anti-apartheid and anti-AIDS campaigns in Africa, and supported leftist politicians like Fidel Castro of Cuba and Hugo Chavez of Venezuela. His representative informed the New York Times that congestive heart failure was the cause of death. People including Ice Cube, Joe Biden, and Mia Farrow paid tribute to Harry Belafonte. Belafonte, according to the US president, was a groundbreaking American who used his talent and voice to help redeem the soul of our nation. Harry Belafonte's accomplishments are legendary, and his legacy of outspoken advocacy, compassion, and respect for dignity will endure forever, Biden wrote on Twitter. He inspired generations around the entire world in the struggle for nonviolent resistance, justice, and change. US News presenter Christian Omanpour wrote on Twitter. Now more than ever, we require his example. The late Dr. Martin Luther King's daughter, Bernice King, posted a photo of Harry Belafonte during a father's burial and praised him for showing up for my family in very sensitive ways. In fact, that covered the cost of my siblings and my childcare. Angelique Kidjo, a Beninese French musician, referred to Belafonte as the brightest star in every sense of the word. You had an unbridled enthusiasm for, love for, knowledge about, and respect for Africa. Belafonte was born in working-class Harlem, New York, in 1927. He spent his early years in his parents' impoverished native Jamaica for eight years. He went back to New York to finish high school, but due to dyslexia, he left in his early adolescence. He did odd jobs in marketplaces and the city's common area until enlisting in the U.S. military in March 1944 at the age of 17 and beginning work as a weapons loader at a base in New Jersey. He assisted a janitor after the war but dreamed of acting after seeing plays at the American Negro Theater in New York together with fellow actor aspirant Sidney Poitier. He paid for his acting studies by performing jazz, folk, and pop songs at New York clubs with bands that included Miles Davis and Charlie Parker. His colleagues in these classes included Marlon Brando and Walter Matthau. In 1954, he issued his debut record, which was a collection of classic folk tunes. His third album, Colapso, which featured songs from his Jamaican ancestry the next year, outperformed his second. Belafonte, which peaked at number one in the new US Billboard album list in March 1956. It was the first record to sell more than a million copies in the US and introduced the upbeat Colapso sound to many Americans. Teo the Banana Boat Song, a hallmark Belafonte song that reached 18 weeks in the UK singles chart, including three weeks at number two, was the album's first tour. Later that year, his cover of Mary's Boy Child topped the UK charts, and Island in the Sun peaked at number 3. Along with his 30 studio albums, he also collaborated on recordings with Miriam Makiba, Lena Horne, and Nana Maskori. The latter release earned him one of his two Grammys, he later received the Grammy for Lifetime Achievement and the President's Merit Award from the Academy. On Belafonte's 1962 album Midnight Special, Bob Dylan made his debut recording while playing harmonica. Frank Sinatra had recruited Belafonte to play at John F. Kennedy's inauguration the year before. Alongside his music career, Belafonte also pursued acting. He appeared in John Murray Anderson's Almanac, a musical review show, for which he won a Tony Award in 1954. He also made appearances in a number of films. Most notably as one of the leads in Island in the Sun with James Mason, Joan Fontaine, and Joan Collins, with whom he had an affair. In Carmen Jones and Bright Road, he appeared twice alongside Dorothy Dandridge. However, he declined to be in the Porgy and Bess adaption because he thought it was racially demeaning. Later, he claimed that the choice had helped fuel the rebel spirit that had been developing inside of him. He channeled this passion into a lifetime of activism, using his newly acquired fortune to support various causes. He was mentored by Paul Robeson and Martin Luther King Jr. He helped King get out of jail in Birmingham. Alabama, in 1963 and co-organized the March on Washington that ended with King's I Have a Dream speech. 
Additionally, he worked on voter registration drives and provided funding to the Freedom Riders and SNCC. Activists opposed to illegal segregation in the American South. Later, he concentrated on other projects related to Africa. He organized the all-star charity CD We Are The World, which helped raise more than $63 million for famine relief. His 1988 album Paradise in Gazenkalo also made a statement against South Africa's apartheid. In 1987, he was chosen to serve as a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF. Later, he worked to get AIDS out of Africa. In 1996, following his recovery from prostate cancer, he became an advocate for the condition. He was a fervent supporter of left-leaning politics, denouncing the U.S. government's militaristic foreign policy, fighting nuclear weaponry, and meeting with Castro and Chavez. He called U.S. President George W. Bush the greatest terrorist in the world during their meeting in 2006. He also compared Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice, two of President Bush's black Secretary of State, to slaves who performed housework rather than farm work, accusations that both Powell and Rice rejected. He frequently criticized Democrats, especially Barack Obama, on matters like as the war against right-wing extremism and the detentions at Guantanamo Bay. In 2012, he blasted Jay-Z and Beyonce for turning their back on social responsibilities. Now that I have Bruce Springsteen, we can start conversing. I firmly believe he is black. That was just the wrong way to go about it, Jay-Z retorted. You're the civil rights activist and you just bigged up the white guy against me in the white media. He nevertheless occasionally took up performing gigs. He made an appearance in the 2018 Spike Lee film Black KK Klansman. Although it was never made, 12 years a slave director Steve McQueen said in 2014 that he was collaborating with Belafonte on a film on Paul Robeson. Belafonte had two daughters, activist Adrian and actor Sherry, from his first marriage to Marguerite Bird, which lasted from 1948 to 1957, with his second wife, Julie Robinson. He had two more kids, the actor Gina and the music producer David. After 47 years of marriage, he and Robinson were divorced. In 2008, he married Pamela Frank, who is still alive.